people if you put in give them your shout outs and tell the people, hey, service is going to start in 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. And make your uh, thing going on there. That looks pretty good. You got to turn it on towards you. It looks good from there. Mm -hmm. over here. Cool. Or is it too far? You can zoom in or no? I mean, I don't know how much you want. If you turn it around and look at it, can you flip it? Yes, I mean, I did. I don't know how much space you want because you'd be like, I want to see my outfit. At yeah. least, uh, how about uh, at least? It's from your knees up. Okay, so that's perfect. What did you say? Yeah. You gotta press to the, to the right of it when you press it out, press it back in. You gotta press to the right because it, it's like going right. Yeah, you gotta kind of press it this side. Oh. Oh, it's just when you put the cap on. It should show up it's in time. It's like it's running out of time. Say it again. Yeah, we'll just. Uh, when I get back, we'll buy another camera. If you guys want to help out and buy a camera, let me know. Camera for us. What happened? I didn't get it. I pressed live. Because oh. I like to, you can log in. To log in and it gets people to see that it's sort of about to start. Sometimes I'll already be like pre scripted in. People are already uh, just coming on, trying to jump out the car running. So, a little three, five minutes before we get, get started. Please send them to get their Bibles. But when it's passing that little yellow thing, that means it's in. It's not in, it's not registering. And if we have to just upload it, then fine. My camera lasted us, what, three years? Three, three years, so got it from what, 200 bucks or something? You don't know what I'm starting now, I'm just. Cool. You gotta adjust that, uh, that, that one now, too. Which one? No, no. Brittany, can you work? You already logged on? Rick? Alright, cool. Good job, good job. Cool. So, we'll just get started. Later on, uh, I think you gotta turn it a little bit to see. Yeah, there we go. Get some of the commandments going. Alright. Commandments. The commandments. Commandments. Welcome. Welcome to true Hebrews United. Who are the true Hebrews? Is it people that's the seed of Abraham? Not necessarily. It's the people counted of the promise. When Hamashiach came and he seen one of who to soon become an apostle, he said a true Hebrew, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. The true ones are those that's keeping his commandments. Those are the true Hebrews. The Hebrew in the Old Covenant or New Testament that was committed adultery, or that was committed idolatry, they were cut off from his people. No matter if they were infringes, or if they were circumcised on the eighth day, you were cut off. So the true Hebrews united to the Lord, Yeshua. Oh, Definitely give honor, all honor, to the Almighty, creator of all things, through his son, Yeshua Mashiach. Definitely double honor to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, 
across the whole planet and uh, teaching this word, teaching people to repent and bring their hearts back to the Father. Definitely give heart. I'm just one piece of the puzzle of many members of the body. Definitely give uh, uh, respect and uh, show our love. Shout out to all the brothers and sisters across the whole planet. Keeping his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, his precepts, and his ways. Old and New Testament. Definitely uh, thank all the people on the Facebook that share and like the videos that make comments and ask questions. Feel free to call 619-501-1375. You can message me and or you could uh, call me on the messenger and you could hit me up on the WhatsApp as well. So all those people, you know, I know people WhatsApp works because, you know, they don't have the money to pay for the fees because they're expensive. Uh, definitely thank them. All the people on the, uh, YouTube that subscribe, that watch and comment on the videos, appreciate you. All you haters out there, I appreciate you too. I hope you repent and get saved. I don't really pay too much attention to them. Sometimes they make comments. I don't even, I got, I got just enough time to try to save souls. I don't got time to be worrying about, you know, keyboard warriors and whatnot. I think the Almighty haven't had that happen so much. So, um, amen. Go ahead, what you want to say, Sister Ridley? I want to say something to the people. To the peeps. To the people. Go ahead, you two, you come up. Yeah, you're good. Shalom, everybody. There you go. All right, come on. You better have a good piece of tabernacle too when it comes. You're right. You better have a good one too. Uh, what you want to say to the people? You want to just wave at them? There you go. Great. You're as shy as the kids. Go ahead. Shy. Love everybody. There you go. Do the alert. Do the alert. Hey, I know such a one, brother, in the body or out of the body. I cannot tell. On the high Sabbath, they be doodling. Doodling on pieces of paper and not paying attention to service. What would you like to see? What are you doing? What would you like to say to the people? It's okay. It's okay. Everyone knows your story. It's all right. What would you like to say to the people? Um, that I hope that you have a great feast and that um, Teacher Simon realizes that he's shorter than I am. Yeah, no right. How much he stands on his tippy toes. Yeah, that right. So tall. That is me. She's, I'm like 6'2 and you're like 5'2. <laughs> Difference between I'm head and those shoulders. I have a squirrel. <laughs> all right. So, with all that said being done, let's let the fingers do the walking. Eh. <laughs> That's right. Oh, right. That's the only one. You're gonna get some extra treats because I didn't hear nothing from you, you, I you, or you. I, I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> let's try that again. Let's let the fingers do the walking. Eh. <laughs> Can you get her a red vine in a minute? <laughs> no, you didn't say nothing. I, I didn't know did. you say nothing. But she started early and it was so cute, so we wanted to hear her. That was too bad. Can you get her a red vine in a minute? Hmm? She yes. has it. She's going to get after service. We're hooking you up. Let's get it. Habakkuk oh, chapter 1. Habakkuk chapter 1. Habakkuk chapter 1. We got a lot of scripture to cover. So, your fingers are going to be burning today. Habakkuk chapter 1. So we're going to start at verse 1. I'm going to tell you. What are they, um, 
You guys ready? Ready? Let's get Habakkuk chapter 1. The burden of Habakkuk, the prophet did see. O Almighty, how long shall I cry? And thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence. And thou wilt not save. It says, Why dost thou shew me the iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For the spoil and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack, and judgment do not go forth, for the wicked do compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceeded. So he's making this observation, and he feels that the judgment of the Most High is slack, that it's taken a while. And it says, because of that, the unrighteous over uh, the unrighteous or the wicked overtaketh the righteous. Behold, you are among verse five of the heathen in regard. A uh, this is all my talk. Behold, ye among the heathen in regard of uh, and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in their days which I would not believe that would be told unto thee. He's talking about the Messiah coming on the scene. Apostle Paul later on expounded what that scripture means. So he's saying, man, why is it? That I see that judgment on these sinners is slack. And so we see that too when we see that in Revelations or we see that uh, dealing with sinners in this modern day. But in the flip side, we should be happy that judgment is slack because if judgment was quick, then that means it's quick on us as well. So let's keep going. Give me Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah chapter 12. What happened? She said, what's happening? Okay. She got it. Jeremiah chapter 12. That's what's up. Start at verse 1. Righteous art thou, O Almighty, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee on thy judgment. He says, Almighty righteous. He puts this disclaimer out. He said, can I plead with thee a little bit on thy judgment? And it says, Wherefore doth the wicked prosper? So we see in Habakkuk, he says, man, where's the, when are you going to pass judgment on these sinners? Because they're overtaking the righteous. And so we see Jeremiah, he says, Almighty, I know you're righteous, your judgment, but why do the wicked prosper? Let's keep going. It says, why are all they happy that deal treacherously? Why is it that they're the happy ones? Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root, they grow, yet bring forth, and thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. But thou, Almighty, uh, knoweth me. Thou hast seen me and tried my heart toward thee. Pull them out like sheep to the, for the slaughter, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. So he's saying, hey, pass judgment. And Jeremiah, he faced a lot of persecution during his reign. It was right, you know, when he preached, you were going to go into Babylon, and then they went into Babylon. And then they kidnapped them and brought them into Egypt or whatnot. But he's seen how the wicked prosper. And he said, what's up? And, and if you read on, he says, I've served you. And ever since I've been serving you, I've been in adversity. I've suffered a lot. But these wicked people, they're happy. But let's keep going. So let's go to Genesis chapter 15. We go. We're going to start at verse 12. Genesis chapter 15, verse 12. And when the sun was gone down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon them. And he said unto Abraham, Know for surely that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge, and afterwards they shall come out with great substance. So, uh, start to the silence. So, he's dealing with them being 400 years in Egypt. No, I do not believe in one way, shape, or form the 400 years captivity is them being in the United States. And well, another reason I don't believe that is because it says your people, and that means all the Israel. But Haiti wasn't in captivity 400 years. Jamaica wasn't in captivity 400 years. Brazil, we, the transatlantic trade went into multiple places. So he's saying your people, your seed, was in captivity. So one is you'll have to say every place we went just got delivered at this time. Some people say this year or later or whatever. It's 400 years. 
Two, your argument is, oh, well, see, that it can't be Egypt because they weren't enslaved for 400 years. When they first came into the land, you know, during Joseph and whatnot, they had liberty to do what they want. It wasn't until afterwards they multiplied, then they put in the captivity. So they were in captivity for 400 years. That same, and that's why it has to be the United States. That same argument could be applied to the United States because I get it. We were allowed freedom at 19, 18, 74, 60, whatever, right? And then they didn't they didn't give us freedom, you know, some states and they fought and all that stuff, right? Max Pension, Proclamation, whatever that garbage, right? But we were able to have passports for quite some time now. You could leave the country. You can't say I'm in captivity, but I, I if we just got out of captivity, how I was just leaving the country before then? For all these people that say, Oh, you know, it's four hundred years, get a captivity, this and this, that and that, this and this, that and that. We're making a celebration. You know, I'm not knocking the fact that you're happy that We've been in a captivity 400 years, but I do not believe this scripture right here is dealing with being the United States. Because it says your seed. And the only time all of Israel, all of them, not all, oh, some of Israel was in Haiti and Jamaica, and some's in the UK, and some is in uh, Canada, and some is in Brazil and Jamaica, and all this stuff. All of Israel was in captivity at the same time, in the same geographical location. That was Egypt. But that's a side note. So when we deal with this prophecy, and some people believe it's Babylon or whatever, you know, I'm not going to disfellowship with people over that. That's not the foundation of apostle and prophet. Someone believes in that, but they're keeping the commandments, they're keeping the they're keeping his commandments, and they're just off on their Bible prophecy. I'll fellowship with them all day, you know, because can I say I didn't have all wisdom and all knowledge? Can I say my knowledge supersedes or equals the apostles that the Almighty set up? No, I can't. So I can't get mad at the next brother that's learning, and he's studying, he's trying his best, but he better be keeping his commandments, because it says we're not going to even eat with them. For brother and sisters calling themselves brothers that are fornicator, adulterer, idolater, do with this, this, and it. This says don't even eat with them. We just read that the other day. So back to this. It says, I'll bring you into captivity, and you should come out with grave sin. Verse 15, and thou shalt go into thy father's house in peace, and thou shalt be buried in, in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come out hither again, for the iniquity of the Armorites is not yet full. And that's my key point. See, the Almighty, whether he knows you're going to obey or not, he always gives you space to repent. He always gives you grace. And this is this time to use this grace or use this space to do the right thing. He knew the Armorites was not going to uh, uh, obey his commandments or live righteous. But he gave them space. So on the day of judgment, he says, you had time to do the right thing. You had plenty of time to do the right thing. And he's so righteous that even though he knows he's not going to obey, he gave them, okay, when your iniquity reaches to this point, I'm going to pass judgment on you. And he used Israel to pass judgment on the Armorites and the Perizzites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Cabanites and all these guys and whatnot. So let's keep going. Give me a revelation. No, we won't do a revelation right now. Give me Jonah. Jonah, chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 1. They all of them, they can't, they can't even leave your mouth, huh? I mean, that's cool. It's snap. You know how when the kid just likes their juice that they just, and it stays on their mouth and then they just keep it on their lips and then they do this and it doesn't even leave their mouth the whole time? Look at now. Ready? I was waiting for someone to say it was popping on the subway. Get something or whatever. Alright, chapter 1. Now the word. Now the word of the Almighty came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come before me. Now Nineveh was an ancient, what they call ancient, Assyria nation. They were not Hebrew Israelites. They were not Hebrew Israelites at this time. They were not Hebrew Israelites. So he's telling Israel to go and tell another place to repent that are not Hebrew. Let's keep going. 
But Jonah rose up to flee for, to Tarshish from the presence of the Almighty and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, and he paid the fare thereof and went down to it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Almighty. But the Almighty sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. So let's go to verse uh, chapter 3, and we'll start at verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1, because we're not going to read the whole story. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. He got thrown off the ship, a great fish ate him up. For three days he repented, and then he went back. The fish spit him out right after he repented. And the word of the Almighty came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Almighty. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city and was three days' journey, and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and then of us shall be overthrown. So he said, Forty days, he's given him a warning. He's given him space to repent. The Almighty has shown him these non Hebrews grace. Let's keep going. So the people in Nineveh believed the Most High and proclaimed the fast and put sackcloth from the, great, the greatest of them, even unto the least of them. For the word of the king of Nineveh, he arose from his throne, and, and he laid his robe uh, from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes, and caused it to proclaim a publish throughout Nineveh. By a decree of the kings and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast nor herb nor fox taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto the Most High. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who could tell if the Almighty would turn and repent and turn away from their spiritual anger that perish not? So, right here, even though it says, uh, verse 7, Proving that it's non Hebrews as well, it says in the king, there was a king in Nineveh. So it couldn't have been Israel because uh, we had our own kings. There was no two kings except when the Almighty split some of the tribes because of Solomon's sin. So let's keep going. So my main point is the Almighty gave him space to repent. And I'm going to bring this to 11 bread. I'm just laying the foundation right now. I'm going to bring this right back to 11 bread. So give me Amos chapter 3. One book over, one book to your left, Amos chapter 3, starting at verse 1. It says, Hear the word of the Almighty has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which are brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? He also says, I'll put a plumb the line. It says, it says, it's not that my ear is too heavy that I cannot hear, or my arm is too short that I cannot reach. It says, but your iniquities have separated from uh, me from you, O house of Israel. So let's keep going. Can a bird be taken in the snare upon the earth where there is no gin for him? Shall one take a snare from the earth and have not taken nothing at all? Shall the trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be idiot in the city, and the Lord have not done it? Truly the Lord Almighty will do nothing but he reveal it, uh, his secrets unto the servants, the prophets. And what do the prophets do? They preached the gospel and gave people time to repent. They gave him a time gap. And I'm, this relates to our everyday life. He gave you a gap and grace to repent and do the right thing before judgment came. You know, before judgment came. Because when you pass judgment, there's no turning away. In the midst of judgment, there's no turning away. You have the opportunity to do the right thing before you get put in prison. But when you go to the court, when you get caught, and you go to court for judgment, there is no, oh, I want to do the right thing now. No, nah, right? you know to go what speed limit. You know not to murder. You know not to rob a bank now. This is your space, uh, space to do the right thing. Because once you do it, and you get caught, and judgment comes, in prison, oh, I messed up. Can I get out of prison? Yeah, in 10 more years. Let's keep going. So he reveals nothing by the service of prophet. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33, verse 27. And we're going to start at verse 27. Ezekiel 33. Verse 27. Say, say thou thus unto them, thus saith the Almighty, 
As I live, surely uh, they that are in the waste shall fall by the sword. And him that is in the open field will I give to the beast to be devoured. And they that be in the forts or in the cave shall die of pestilence. For I will lay in land a most desolate, and a pomp of her strength shall cease. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, and none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am the Almighty when I lay the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they committed. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the house and the prophets one to another, every one to his brother saying, Come, pray ye, and hear what is the word that cometh from out of the Almighty. And they come to thee as a people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear their words, but they will not do them. For in their mouth they shew much love, but in their heart is after their own covenants. And that goes to Facebook, YouTube people. As a side note, you come and you watch service or you watch people time and time again. But when it comes to obeying the word, you will not do it. Man, I like hearing this minister of this. I like the songs or I play it on the radio. Or I have my songs and I worship the Almighty. But when it's all said and done, you're still disobeying the word. When it's all said and done, as much as you hear, the word has to get off. These words have to get off this book and get into your heart. The preaching has to get off the internet, off the YouTube, and get into your heart. It can't just be you just hearing it in one ear and out the other. we got to come up higher. So that same mannerism, especially on Facebook, they, they watch all these ministers. I met some brother the other day. You know, he's talking about, hey, yeah, that one, this, where he, he this. I was like, what congregation you go to? I don't have one. And it didn't even seem like he's looking for one. He should be praying, hey, I need to find a congregation. I need to find a place where I belong. Oh, thank you, all you people that's trying to make it. Hey, if I got to fly out to there, you know, Million B, shout out to Hebrew One, all those people. If I got to fly out to you guys and see what's up, you guys want to be a part of tonight and be baptized. It says, make, uh, do the work of an uh, evangelist, make proof of your work in the ministry. I have no problem doing what it takes to save souls. That's not an issue. So don't let distance be a discouragement. But, um, I'm dealing with these people that will hear the word, but won't obey. But let's keep going. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this, and when this come to pass, and lo, it will come. The destruction which is talking about, verse 27 and 28. And lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet is but among them. It's going to be sad when... Um, I don't personally believe that this is part of the destruction of Babylon or Bible prophecy. It could be this whole coronavirus and whatnot. But you can't get a passport. You can't leave the country. If you can't get a passport, you can't leave the country. If you're saying, oh, I'll just leave where? Mexico closed its borders. And even if they open the borders, now you need a passport to go into Mexico. And yeah, you can sneak and jump a fence and underground railroad it. It's possible. But how much more trouble you got to do if you just have a passport? And they're making it not. So they're trapping you in. You could put yourself in a place where you cannot leave. And now they're going to force you or they're going to imprison you unless you take their mark or take their microchip or take their vaccination. They're going to force their will on you. Then what? Or they'll take your children. You don't do this, CPS comes and takes your children. Then what? Because you heard the word, heard the word, heard the word. I keep telling people, hey, man, that's not the place to be. Get out of Babylon. Get out of Babylon. You don't know what Babylon is. Be praying to the Almighty. Almighty, what is Babylon? It's talking about, I know the book of Revelation is not fulfilled. It's talking about Babylon. Now, I know the Babylonian kingdom already got destroyed, just like the Roman kingdom that came and gone. That empire has been gone hundreds of years ago. So if Revelation has not been fulfilled, what do you mean Babylon? What country are you talking about? What empire are you talking about? To, that means today. You should be praying for that. And if you're unsure, I teach y'all what is Babylon. There's a playlist, I think a five-part, seven-part series. I go into detail. It takes multiple services. I go into detail. What is Babylon? What is it? How is it physical? How to do that? So we'll go from there. So carry it on. And when this comes to pass, and lo, you're going to know that a prophet's been among you. And I'm bringing that to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. One more scripture, then I'm going to break, break, break down. I'm going to lay the foundation one more time. And then we're going to build upon this foundation. Go ahead and give me uh, Revelations chapter 2. Revelations chapter 2. You people out there, your first thing, first thing order, repent. All right? You're hearing the word. 
you don't have a congregation, but you're hearing the word or you're reading the word and you stop lying on your own. You can do that on your own. You stop stealing. You can do that on your own. You stop doing this. You stop doing this. You start picking up this. You start watching service. You go from reading the Bible. You start watching service. All right. All right. Uh, finding ministers. Oh, T.D. Jakes. Oh, that's false. Uh, Joel Steen, that's a prosperity preacher. You don't know who's who, who's right, but you're reading the word, you're praying, you're trying to find where I belong. Bam. So then you come across this point where you're reading the word, you watch the service, you need to get baptized. So then when you read in the book of Acts, only ministers baptize people, right? You don't see where, you, hey, drunk guy over there, can you come baptize me real quick? You don't see no random people baptizing people. Look in the Bible. Ministers were baptizing people. It wasn't any random citizen. I need to get baptized. No, there's none of that. These ministers were baptized. So being like, I need to find someone to baptize me. And a minister will be a part of the congregation. So by default, because it says they select elders in every city, everywhere they preach the gospel, they were there for a couple of years. They laid hands on the people that was diligent and full of the spirit. They made them an elder, a minister over it. And their churches were in houses. They didn't always have buildings because they were facing persecution. So there was always structure and order. There wasn't this, I'll just take my Bible and I just do my own thing. I watch who I want. I do what I want. I'm not accountable to no one. And let's do it. Do you know how many doctrines would be out there if we did that? Because not everyone is raised. So it's not just every time Israel says they did what was right in their own eyes, it led to them transgressing the most high. Every single time. Look it. Look. Next time, put in your phone and Google they did what was right in their own eyes. It comes around two times in the Bible, in the Old Testament. And it, when they said that, that's because they transgressed. Well, I don't really see why if I have to pay my bills, I can't, you know, if I break the Sabbath, you know, but the Almighty knows I don't want to break the Sabbath, but it's for me to take care of. Yeah, you're doing what's right in your own eyes. You're doing what's right in your own eyes. It says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Look up that scripture too. There is a way that seemeth right. But the end thereof is death. It says, shall we continue in sin that grace shall abound? God forbid. But I'm going to deal with that in a little bit. Revelations chapter 2. I'm going to read fast because we got a lot of scripture to cover with Revelation. We'll be reading chapter 2 and chapter 3. You guys ready? Praise all my. Revelations chapter 2. Let's get it. Unto the church of Ephesus write these things, said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven uh, candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and found them liars. All these people saying they are apostles. Do I believe there's some apostles out there today? Amen. I do believe there's some apostles out there. They're doing the work of the apostles, they're taking oversight of multiple churches. And whatnot, but the difference between the apostles today and the prophets today is they cannot write scripture, they cannot add on to what's already laid. This is it. Now, a prophet today can say, Hey, uh, thus said the Almighty, you're gonna inherit a certain amount of money, he wants you to give 50 percent to this and this and this and this and this. And a week later, hey man, you just want a prize and whatnot, he's a prophet. I believe that. But him giving a prophecy, a, a present prophet, a prophecy of what's going on in your life, he's not adding or taking away to this book. But like the Mormons with Joseph Smith, an angel came and gave into him a whole nother doctrine contrary to this. No, there's no prophets today. All the prophets were able to write scripture. The apostles were able to write scripture because they got it directly from their most high and they put it in an epistle form or they wrote it and bam, they were able to write scripture. No apostle or prophet today can add to this. They could build upon it and say, hey, you know, it says modest apparel. Hey, we do four inches over the neck. Skirts need to be half, half of the calf. That way, no matter how they sit, no one can see. They'd be modest, not showing a lot of skin. Bam. It says modest apparel. You know, they could do that, but they can't do all this. Oh, you know, the Almighty showed me that, you know what, this is this and this and this and add to the Bible. No, nope, you can't add or take away. There are no more prophets that's doing it, that working in, the, in the, to that level. There are no, no more apostles, no prophets going to be on that level. All the prophets today will do present day prophecy. Let's keep going. So, 
It says uh, that found them to be apostles and prophets and are not found them liars. That has born, that has uh, born and has patience from thy, thy, for my name's sake and labor, and that has not fainted. Nevertheless, somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, was thou art fallen, and repent and do thy first work, or else I will come quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of thy place, and if they repent. One, you're part of the congregation and does not safeguard your salvation. It says those that continue to the end shall be saved. Two, he's given his own church, because the candlesticks represent the church. He's given his own congregation a, a, a space to get things right. Hey, I know you're doing the right thing. I know you're working for me. You're born. You, you, those people saying they're apostles, hey, but I have something against you that's going to make it to where you don't enter in. And I'm giving you space to repent. I'm giving you time to repent. And this is what he's doing. So let's keep going. But the, uh, but uh, this, that thou, hast the, the, that thou hatest the deeds and the negolations, which I also hate. So they were doing the right thing in some areas. And that's the same thing with Feast of Eleven Bread. You could be keeping the commandments, but there should, should be some things that's keeping you out of the kingdom or keeping you from growing. Because you can only go so far if something's lacking. Me working out, I mean, which I haven't been doing it since it's grown up quarantine, but back in the day when I used to work out before this quarantine, um, I didn't work out my abs. I've always had a six pack as long as I can remember. So I never really worked out my abs. Worked out my legs, worked out my arms and whatnot. Every once in a while I hit my abs, but I got a six pack. I don't got to work out nothing. Don't, I don't got to do cardio. It's fine. So one day I went to work out with my buddy, which I destroyed him in all aspects of strength and endurance. And he said, try my ab workout. I couldn't even get two exercises in before my abs start cramping. I said, dude, I got to stop. It looks like I'm going to get hernia. Why is that? Because I could only go so far and have a part of my buddy uh, part of my body lacking to where it's going to cause the whole body to stop, to shut down. And that's the same thing when you walk, walk with the Most High. You could be abounding in love, but then if your patience is lacking, then you, yeah, you show love and a brother is taking longer, or a brother offends you, uh, you quickly cut him off. So how far can you really grow with the Most High? When you have love but no patience. Or you have patience, but then you lack love. Are you, you get what I'm saying? So... Let's keep going. First, uh, which here we are, I didn't it for a second. Which I hate to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the par uh, paradise of the Most High. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, these things saith the first and the last, which is was dead and is alive. I know thy works and thy tribulation and thy part uh, uh, poverty, but thou. Uh, but thou, uh, art, but thou art rich. I know thy blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but, but are the synagogue and say the ones in Israel right now. Fear none of these things which uh, thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that they may be, uh, that you may be tried, and you shall be, have tribulation ten days. But be faith, thou be faithful unto death, and I will uh, give thee a crown of life. And see this, he says, be faithful unto death. And Smirnoff didn't have to, Smirnoff didn't even have to repent. And it says, be faithful unto death. You, what you're doing, you on point. You're perfect. There's nothing you have to repent from. Just be faithful unto death and keep going. Let's keep going. Verse 11. He that have a ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. He that overcometh shall not be hurt on the second death. And the angel said unto the church of Pergamus, write these things, said, he which have a sharp sword with the two edges. I know thy works where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, that thou hast uh, and thou holdest fast my name that has not denied my faith, even in the days wherefore Antiphasis was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, wherefore Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there with them lo that hold the doctrine of Balaam, which taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat the things sacrificed unto the idols, and commit uh, fornication. And that can even be some of these camps out there that have these false pictures of the Messiah. With the red eyes wearing green apparel and the white afro and whatnot, and trying to make an idol, you make an idol. You don't. If you don't look exactly like that, then you are a false witness. You are a false witness. And first of all, it says don't have any image of things in heaven. And where does it say our Messiah dwell, dwells in the heavens? So you're making images of things that dwell in the heavens. So it says not to do that. You and idolatry. But let's keep going. And fornication. So that has also been that hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which I hate. So we have 
the first church, Ephesus, hated the doctrine of Nicolaitans, and the second church, uh, they have the doctrine of Nicolaitans. And both of these are part of the body of Mashiach, but they have things they're lacking, and they need to get it right. But let's keep going. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So he said, I'll fight against you. He that hath an ear, let him hear uh, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat uh, the hidden manner, which I will give him an, uh, a white uh, him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth that he that received it. And unto the angel of the church of uh, Thyatira write these things, said the Son of the Most High, who have eyes like unto a flame of fire, and has his feet is like fine brass. I know thy works, and thy charity, and thy servant, the face, and patience, and thy works, and thy last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered the woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophet, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and eat things sacrificed unto idols. Here we go. I give her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. He gave them space to repent, they don't repent not. So we see here, one, he gives people space to repent. Yeah, I'm going to hit that right now. Let me get that. So we'll stop right there for Revelation. I was going to hit both chapters, but my main point is the Almighty gives us space to repent. I'm going to tie that into the piece of the right, right now. And we have, whether it's a day, whether it's five days, whether it's a month, we have time before he has judgment. What is the judgment he's going to have on these churches if they don't get it right? If I'm going to take your candlestick away, you ain't going to make it into the kingdom. Well, let's go, let me get the shout outs. And now we're going to, now that we built the foundation upon that, let's go. So, I get that grown off. You touched it. Get that off. Anyways, just playing all you people. Oh, that's how you talk to the sister and the most high. No, it's not. It's up in front of you guys. <laughs> Christopher Lee, shout out to Christopher Lee. Kazak, shout out to Brother Vince. Dragon Ball Hebrew. Abishai, Abishai. Abishai. Don't be shy. A B I S H. Abishai. How do you know? Is it if it's Abishai and if Whitney's just Whitney's correct, say Abishai. And if I'm correct, let me know which I am. Abishai. All right. Church is here now. Shaku Kenan. Yahukanan. Yahukanan. Yahuka, she says Yahukanan. I say Yahu Chahat. So give me a heads up and who's right on that one. Ozzy Powell. Uzi Powell. Ozzy Powell. Carmelo. Shout out to Carmelo. I think it's the Carmelo in San Diego. And his brother. Much love to his brother too. D'Angelo Humphrey. D'Angelo Humphrey. Is that a singer? Good night. The singer, Honestly. shout out. When you want a record deal, hit me up. But anyways, shout out to all you people who share, like the videos. Appreciate you guys. Now let's go to First Peter. So we know the Almighty gives us space to repent. He reveals nothing by the service of the prophets. We don't want to use this space to repent and and uh, be lack and end up him passing judgment. So let's keep going. Second Peter. Now we're gonna go a little bit faster. Second Peter chapter three. And we're going to start at verse uh, 15. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Let's get it. And account that the long suffering of our Lord of the Almighty is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom he had given to him that written unto you. So he says that his long suffering is patience. So when we see Habakkuk and Jeremiah says, why be the wicked prophet? says, because judgment is slack. And that's a bold statement. It's like Almighty you take too long passing judgment on people. Now imagine if he did take too long with us. Imagine if he was swift with these heathen and with these unbelievers, but he's also swift with Israel. Let's keep going. So his long suffering is patience, even with Nineveh, even with the Amorites. He says, I'm going to use Israel when we came out. And during the time of Moses and Joshua, Joshua came over the river and, and uh, the Jordan. And they overtook Jericho and Ai and all these other cities. The Almighty gave all these people space. He actually gave these people an extra 40 years because Israel disobeyed for them to try to do right. And they didn't want to do right. So he used Israel to pass judgment on these nations. He says, it's not because you're righteous, 
But it's because the wickedness of these nations, I do cast them out. So if you do the same thing that these Hittites and the Armorites and these Canaanites and the Jupicites, and you do the same thing as them, I'm going to spew you out of this land just like I got them out of this land. So let's keep going. Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Let's get it. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith that is not of yourself, that is a free gift. And this also says, Because the Almighty is merciful of faith, that's why you sons of Jacob are not consumed. It says, Because the Almighty changeth not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. There you go, I have to read. But because it's long suffering and his grace and it's a free gift he's given us, this is our salvation. This is how we save. This is how we save. But let's keep going with this grace. Romans 6, chapter verse 1. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace shall abound. Now he's talking about the uh, being saved by the law and being saved by grace. We are saved by grace, but what does the Almighty say? If you love me, keep my commandments, so we keep the law. I know me keeping the law in and of itself, like the Pharisees, and not receiving Yeshua Hamashiach as our Savior, there is no salvation in keeping the law in and of itself. And in this question they have, there is no salvation in just the mere belief of Hamashiach Yeshua, the Messiah. Just believing that he came and died for our sins and rose again and that I should have eternal life with him and eternal judgment and not keeping the law. That will not equate to salvation. It says faith without works is dead being alone. You, the law and faith have to be mixed together to equate to salvation. Let's keep going. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace shall abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So for us to even get this free gift, we have to be keeping his commandments. And when we are in this grace, he gives us time to repent, to get things right. Let's keep going. Galatians chapter 2. Two more scriptures. Galatians chapter 2. And we're going to deal with verse 20. I am crucified with the Amashiach, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Amashiach that liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of the Most High who loved me and gave himself. I do not frustrate the grace of the Most High. And this is where we get into the point. I do not frustrate. It's a free gift, and I do not frustrate. How can you frustrate the grace of the Most High? But I'll finish the scripture. For if righteousness cometh in the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So once again, I'm telling you. You are not saved in the law in and of itself is faith with it. But we do not frustrate his grace. We do not say, for an example, you may be doing something. And judgment is not swift. Like Habakkuk said, judgment is slack. What happens if you commit sin right now? The Almighty is giving you a chance to self-correct because you know enough of the scripture says, you know what? I told this brother a lie. I need to come back and tell this dude the truth. You have an opportunity to do right. You have an opportunity to repent to the Most High and do the right thing. You know, you have an opportunity. A perfect example. Uh, there was a person that uh, he, uh, I did an interview. We had a moving company, and I gave him a job. I gave him a, I said, yeah, you got the job. And he was excited about the job. He was excited about the job, right? And something happened. We got slow, and I never called him for work. And, and he was super excited to get this moving job. And I never called him. And I just pretty much flaked on this dude, right? Pretty much flaked on this dude. Three weeks later, right? Three weeks later. And that kind of bothered me. I knew, man, I did that dude. I should have called him and said, hey, man, uh, our moving company's slow right now. We can't hire you. I apologize, right? So he's expecting this phone call to start working so he can work at this moving company. And I totally dropped the ball. I flaked on this guy like Kellogg's. Couple of days later, my dad was like, "Yeah, I got a car for you. It was a nice car. It had rims. It was an SUV. I got this car." I was like, Dude, "My dad's gonna give me a whole car." He was like, "All right, that's cool. That's what's up." So I tried to get the car one day, the tire was flat. I tried to get the car another day, my sister didn't work. I tried to get the car the next day, 
uh, since when he had to go to the hospital, so I couldn't get it. And the day after that, he was moving. He had to move out of his apartment, so he needed that out of the parking lot. He took the car away and gave it to his buddy. And I was so hot, dude. I was so hot. But immediately when he did that, it brought me right back to when I let that guy down when he was excited about getting that job. I don't know if his first job or job or whatnot, he was excited about getting that job, and I could have did the right thing, but I didn't do the right thing. So immediately after, the Almighty just had a full-on circle, did it right back to me. Did it right back to me. I got super excited. I thought I was going to get this. You remember that? That car was pretty nice. It was nicer than the Mitsubishi. You know what I'm saying? And the Almighty showed me. You see how you felt when you thought you was going to get a nice ride with rims, a perfectly working vehicle, you just had a fixed flat tire, and you didn't get it? That's what you did to that individual. And it's like, all right, Almighty, judgment came. Judgment came. But I had space to do the right thing, and I chose not to do it. And what happened? The Almighty had to pass judgment and chastise. I mean, I know, and I ain't trying to miss out on another vehicle. I ain't doing that no more. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to mess up on my blessings. So I messed up on my blessings simply for that. Maybe the car wasn't even for me, but the Almighty just orchestrated that just to say, hey, yep, that's what you do to other people. So let's keep going. So the Almighty gives us space to repent. And what happens is if you're too much in the flesh or you haven't been seeking the Almighty spiritually enough, and I'm dealing with the piece of 11 bread because you know if you're in this area, as you do some things and you're like, the Almighty didn't chastise me. Because you may mess up and you're like, well, the Almighty didn't really chastise me. And then you do it again. You're like, well, you know, maybe the Almighty doesn't think so bad about this. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe he's just minister just making it. Maybe my conviction don't need to be so sharp. And then you do it again. And the Almighty's long suffering in his grace. And he's not quick to pass judgment. He's giving you space to repent. But in your mind, you're thinking, he must think it's okay. And so then a month later or two weeks later, then when he passes judgment on you, you're like, oh. and his judgment is way worse. He knows how to chastise his kids, and he hits you where it hurts. He doesn't say, you know what, I'll never go to my kid. I'm like, you know what, because you're getting to school and getting bad grades, go to your room and play video games and just eat some candy. You'll never say that to your kids. They're like, okay. And probably act like they're sad and then they go and play video games and eat junk food all day. No, you won't say that. He knows how to chastise his kids. Some kids you take things away. Some kids you got to physically put the rod of correction on them. Different different situations. You know what hurts them the most or what caused them to repent and do the right thing the most. So last scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Dealing with letters. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start at verse uh, 31. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. It says, For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. If we've known we've done wrong, and I'm pushing this for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because we should be doing this all year long, but we're keeping his feast. So for us to keep his feast and still have yeast, you shouldn't do that. You like that, huh? For you to keep his feast and still harbor yeast. Uh, 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 uh. For you to no. Should I keep going? No. No. See, she said yes. So you keep his feast and still have yeast. Don't be a beast. You like that? So, anyways, for you to keep so 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 you, for you to keep his feast and still have leaven. Is that better? In your heart. That's wrong. That's not giving the Almighty little finger. That's an oxymoron. You can't do that. So now, if we judge ourselves during the feast, like, man, this is a good opportunity to examine myself and see if there's areas I can come up higher. Am I treating my husband right? Or am I long suffering? My patient? How am I dealing with my kid? How am I dealing with the job? How am I doing this? How am I doing? And maybe on the job, you be uh, showing up late and still getting your eight hours. Maybe on the job, you taking that extra money for holiday pay. I don't want your pagan pay. I don't celebrate your false day. You know what I'm saying? You got to really have that mindset. Nah, I'll just do it for straight time. I'm good. And when they do their little company barbecues or a oh, holiday and you know it's a Christmas party or whatnot, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, it's, it's just the end of the year. Your end of the year starts in January. Our end of the year is in March slash April. You, you, I already know. I don't, I don't even go by the Gregorian calendar. I go by the biblical so your end of the year ain't the end of the year. So I know it's to deal with your Thanksgiving and your Christmas. I don't want your pagan food. 
I don't want your pagan pay. You good. You can keep that. I'll just do it for straight time. It's a normal day to me. That's your pagan day. I don't need no extra pay. You know, maybe you're slipping on the job. Maybe you, you're on point and getting awards on the job uh, for your attendance and, and all this. And you're the best employee, employee of the month. And then in the home, you ain't right to your wife. You ain't right to your husband. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about that. So everyone on the job just, oh, man, she's one of the best employees. This and this. We're so glad to have you whatnot. And then your wife's like, man, I made a mistake even dating you. You, you, you know, you could be the worst husband or the worst wife, but the best employee. You know, you got to think about that. What kind of leaven you have? And hey, here's your space. Here's your space to get it right. Don't keep leaven in your heart and then keep the leaven, the feast of 11 days. So, for if we judge, oh yeah, page flip. All right, I'm not good. There we go. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Almighty that we should not be condemned with this world. So the thing that I love a lot, a lot of things I love about the Most High, is as a saint of the Most High and you become his child, he will chastise you in this world. So you go in hopes that you will repent and take part of eternal life. So this is why David had to receive his in this, because if he doesn't chastise you, you refer to as a reprobate, meaning he doesn't fully chastise these sinners. They don't get their full reward. You see uh, Bill Gates and Donald Trump and you see all these people will die rich, but they go into the lake of fire. They will die rich, but they go into the lake of fire. And you see little old me do something small, like just not hire someone. And the Almighty will come back and chastise me for not doing right with my neighbor. It says, love thy neighbor as thyself. I wouldn't want someone to do that to me, so why did I do that to someone else? And that's something small, but the Almighty's already bringing out the belt. I'm like, all right, Almighty, I got it. I understand now. I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? So because I have to be chastised now so I can make it into the kingdom later, I need to repent now because when he passes judgment on these sinners, they can't repent in the day of judgment. They're going straight to the lake of fire. They're getting judgment. So this is why the Almighty has judgment. So as we hit this last scripture, use the Feast of Unleavened Bread as a space to examine yourself, see what you need to work on, and use this as a space to get it right. Get it together. Because you don't want him to pass judgment. Because sometimes he could he passed judgment on someone and he made him a leprous for the rest of his life. And maybe he repent and got, got it right. It shows that he did repent because he found looked for a position. He knew exactly what happened to him. But he didn't seek the Almighty after that. But he could pass judgment to where for the rest of your life, you still make it into the kingdom, but you have no leg. Or you're blind. Or we don't know what judgment he'll use to uh, chastise you for what sin or for what disobedience or for what you said in your heart or what you did to the brothers or sisters. We don't know. But why would we want to go through that unnecessarily? So if we judge ourselves, we should not get judged. Use this space and his grace. It's time to repent. You like that? What about that? Use his face and his grace. Should I keep going? She says, she said it again. Use his face. Remember what happened to Hezekiah? He was going to die. And when he was going to die, he was in the perfect will of the Almighty. He got 15 more years, and what happened? He screwed up. Just stop while you're ahead. She, she said, keep going. Use his face. Use this face and his grace. Do not leave a sour taste. Use his face oh, and okay. his brain. <laughs> you want to be a sweet savor unto the Almighty, right? That song is not sweet. Yeah, it or says savory. offer a sweet savor unto the Almighty, right? Follow me if you're with me, right? Our praises, we say. So if you use his face and his grace to not leave a sour taste. He said that their um, sacrifice for ascension is nostril. Yeah, that's, that's when that's stingy. when they're disobeying. It's stingy. So, with all that said, being done, keep standing. Don't drop standards. Give the whole Almighty a hand clap. Show it off. Yeah. Always yeah. just like that dude. Yeah. Gotta have the last clap, huh? Yeah. Gotta have the last. Yeah. DV women always have to have the last yeah. clap. As soon as someone makes you, this is what you should do. As soon as he has the last word, yeah. last text, you can just 